In the beginning, God was nothing. So he started making stuff. He made the dirt, he made the sky, he made the water, he made things that swim, things that slither, things with legs. I mean, God turned himself into a big shot. Then a couple of days or a couple of million years, he breathed life into man. And he's been sucking the life out of us ever since. I am the resurrection. Being in the gang is a lot like being in a religion. You got rules to follow, a leader to obey. And at the heart, it's about love. Love thy fellow man, becomes love thy brother gangster. But what if you stop believing the religion you've been preaching? You come to see that the whole is still in your soul, that the God slash love you thought you had is nothing but a hologram. Hey. To belong, you gotta be able to deal. You gotta share power. You gotta share pain. There's some pain that you don't share. Some pain like your fingerprints, that's all yours. All alone. They say confession is good for the soul. You go into a confessional and you can tell a priest anything. Anything. And he can't repeat it. You go into an interview room with your local PD and say what you've done. Well, the cops are telling the DA and the papers and everybody else. So you do some deed and you want to clean your conscience and still get away with it? Well, tell your mama or tell a priest. When you pray, do you go into a zone? Does the rest of the world drop away? I've never been there. God in coma. I can say an our father and think about lunch at the same time. Some people say that if you don't accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God, as your personal savior, you won't go to heaven. But is there a guarantee that if you do believe in Jesus, you will be saved? Or will God, the great practical joker, leave you hanging? In Oz, sometimes the things you can't touch are more real than the things you can. For instance, fear, hatred, loneliness are more real to me than a shank and a soul. Every day can grow into something you can almost hold. How fucked up is that? In a shithole like this, to first and finally see the face of God. Some say finding God is a glorious thing. They're wrong. It's dangerous. You spend your whole life in a world of men. But when you finally see his power, his greatness, other men fall out of view because you're so focused on him. You can barely see them from the corners of your eyes. You lose sight of them. Here's a pop quiz. Name the seven deadly sins. Come on. You saw that Brad Pitt movie. Lust, yeah, well, everybody gets that one. Huh, gluttony, sure. Greed, yeah. Envy, sloth, anger, or to be a little more technical, wrath. What else? What else? Let me put it this way. If you think you know the answer and because of that, you think you're better than everybody else, <laughs> then you're guilty of it. <laughs> we try to figure out what God wants from us, why he put us here. We try to make deals with him, but God is one tough motherfucker. And we know to get what we need, we gotta give up what matters most. Anything less, he's not interested. God knows he's perfect and we not. And we can never be, but he expects us to be. And he punishes us if we not, you know what I'm saying? God is the ultimate gangster. The supreme mob boss, you know what I mean? Make us live by his cold deadness if we don't. Yo, he never has to talk to us face to face. And he never has to explain exactly why he does what he does. You know what I'm saying? Nigga sits up there in heaven somewhere, drinking a cappuccino, chilling. Ha <laughs> ha! Got the whole world in his hands. Ha <laughs> ha! He got the whole world by the balls. In excelsis Deo and all that shit. Uh, mm, uh.